Hey guys, baseball episode this time, and we did want to cut a little clip out of it. As you can see, if you're watching on the YouTube, Jordan and Sean are joining me. We're going to go over their top five wish lists for which players they want on the Red Sox this season. It's a five-player list for each of them, and that'll be this, uh, this episode's little clip that we will post on YouTube this weekend. So enjoy. All right. Um, I just want to preface the wish list part, and then we're going to get to it. I think that this is definitely going to be more of a signal as to what the Red Sox are trying to do this offseason than maybe any offseason in the last couple of years and certainly any of the offseasons coming. Only because they are now out of the tax problem. They can go spend over the luxury tax if they want. The question is, will they? And I want them to, because you're the Boston freaking Red Sox. And at a certain point, you're going to get out of the JD contract next year. You can off, uh, you can offload some of your other contracts if you need to, but you still have to make room for the Devers extension, which Price is the is off the books after this year, too, after 2022. There you go. Okay, I wasn't actually sure on that. I was going to ask you guys, but thank you for that. Um, I just think that you have to spend... You, this is. I understand that he wants to run this like Tampa Bay to an extent, and it has worked. Renfro. Great signing. Robles, as much as I crapped on him for being an arsonist, turned out to be, eh, not terrible. Um, other guys that he's signed, Kike, I mean, that, that was looking like a steal more and more. But, at the end of the day, you're Tampa Bay with cash, and I want you to spend said cash. Instead of having to go and punt on your best players, go and invest and go and get some of the top players on the market and re-sign your studs, Rafael Devers. All right, with that being said, here we are, wish list time. What do you guys have? And I'm going to say, I want to do this 5-1, to one and we'll, you guys will switch off. So, Jordan, you can start. Who's your number 5 player that you want on this team come next year? My number 5 player is Alex Cobb. I love him. I wanted mm. him badly at the deadline. There's the Tampa Bay connection there. He's from the Boston area. <clears throat> uh, based on volume alone, 2013 and 14 are probably better seasons. But other than that, this was the best year of his career. I know he missed a lot of time because he had like a blister issue at one point. I think he had a calf strain at some point. But he was awesome when he was on the field. He made 18 starts for the Angels. He had a career year in strikeouts. I like I like the idea of having him as your number four, number five starter. It keeps Whitlock in the bullpen first and foremost. But Alex Cobb is my number five target. Sean, who's your number five? Call me insane. And this is kind of like a... a I like, like, like where a, this a is twofer, going. A twofer. Um, am I like a bit of a nutcase to want Brooks Raley and James Paxton? Like, Paxton is obviously going to be an injury issue. He's coming off Paxton, of Tommy John. Paxton, Seattle, correct? And then yeah. Raley was the guy he in threw, Houston, the reliever. Yeah. Okay. He threw two-thirds of an inning this year. I drafted him in like the <laughs> fifth round in my fantasy draft. And then I immediately had to get rid of him. Um, <laughs> that's a tough look. That's a real tough yeah, look. Yeah, no, it, it was not ideal, but I still think that I still think that there's something there with him. Um, and even if he comes, back, if he like you get him back mid-season, I think that would be a great like you know just kind of like an under the kind of like what the Yankees did with Kluber. I know that didn't necessarily work out too well, um, but it's low risk, high reward. I would say. And then my justification for Rayleigh is Houston has really kind of developed. It. They've they've taught him the the sweeper. Or at least they've taught him the beginnings of it, which is like you know that wonder pitch that the Dodgers and the Astros are teaching uh, right now. So you know if he's like you know if he's willing to come to Boston, like you know maybe <laughs> he'd be a good back end uh, back end of the bullpen arm. Um, just kind of uh, bolster up, beef up there. Um, I think it would be a good kind of like another under the radar move uh, to grab him off the uh, the free agent pile. So, for those who don't know, the sweeper pitch is kind of that wipeout curveball, correct? That starts in, like, way way on, way on one side and finishes all the way over on the other one? Exactly, yeah. Okay. A.K.A. unhittable. Yeah. It's like Chris Sale's slider, basically. <laughs> yeah, basically. Exactly. Okay, cool. So, and also, lefty depth, I believe, in the bullpen, correct? Need Definitely it. something mm -hmm. of need, because Martin Perez made way too many appearances in the postseason. <laughs> just way too many. And, and I think he had, like, two. Was it two? <laughs> I think it was two. <laughs> yep. Way and too they many. Were both, and they were both terrible. I mean, he got a double play in the first one, but the second one, no. Don't justify it! <laughs> <laughs> we'll go snake draft here, style. So, Sean, you can go with your number four here. My number four is a little bit, depending on how the Red Sox are going to spend, it's a little bit more pie in the sky. Um, but it shouldn't be, I think. Chris Taylor, I think you already have yes. the verse. You yes. already exact. You know, you know. You're you're a you're a you're a secondary Taylor, Dodgers. Taylor fan. Taylor and Justin Turner are the only guys that I still like on the Dodgers, and I love them. They're two of my top five players in the sport. Mm -hmm. Favorite in terms of favorite, not not good. Yeah, not I was, like I skill. Level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just realized I'm like no, I got to set the record straight on that. No, not skill yeah. level. I just love both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, fair enough. 
Um, it's key. It's a souped up Kike. Yeah. No. Exactly. And I mean, like you know, when you when you pair them together again, you have all the positional versatility in the world. Um, he's was an above average defender at every position he played last year, other than third base. And with Devers there, you don't really need to worry about that. Um, like he had zero or one outs above average at every position, shortstop, second base, outfield, like you name it. He was perfectly average. Um, and you know, he's, he's an above average hitter, both by expected stats and just by his genuine results. Um, it doesn't hurt to bring in a guy who's, I'm not a big believer in like, you know, postseason experience, but he's got the postseason experience. He's been with the Dodgers for ages now. Um, I think it couldn't hurt at all if, and it helps you address your second base issue. Like there's no reason not to. All right. I li- I hey, I like what you're giving me here with Chris Taylor. I'm a big fan. So, Jordan, who's your number four? It was going to be uh, Jolie Rodriguez, the, the, but the Yankees brought him back last night. He was literally on my list, and I went, well, damn, i got to change that. I can't can't put him on there. So I'm going for, for a lefty reliever that is a little bit better. It's, I mean, I shouldn't say a little bit better. He's definitely better. The only issue is he's going to cost a lot more money probably, and that is Andrew Chafin. He has been – awesome for most of his career outside of 2020 again it was only nine and two-thirds innings so that's i mean nine and two-thirds innings um but he's been a very <clears throat> very productive reliever for a while ever since 2015 his worst season in terms of fifth was 3.39 and that was 2017 last year he did have a little bit of luck with uh with home runs in terms of the sense that it was 0.52 per nine innings uh, his his expected FIP was four. That was a career low. But the problem, or but the issue here is, I think the Red Sox needed somebody to replace Darwin's and Hernandez. I love him, but that man's command has not gotten much better over the course of his of his major league career. Give him some time in the worse. minors. It has probably gotten worse, especially when it comes to just timely outs. You can't put him in in a jam against a lefty because we saw it. Hits Anthony Rizzo, grand slam to Giancarlo Stanton because he can't face right. And that either. thing may still not have landed. I don't think it has, but Andrew That Chafin... was an absolute oh. missile. I thought, oh. the season, I thought the season was over at that Me too. Point. I was Me too. like, it's done. It's done. That's the Me dagger. Too. Chafin that doesn't walk, guys. That's the big thing. He's not He's not going to be the strikeout guy he was during the, the spider attack era, I doubt, but he doesn't <laughs> walk, guys. That's huge. All right. Uh, wrap around. Jordan, you're number three. My number three guy, I'm really, I mean, it's not a, it's not a free agent. I want to trade for Cattell Marte. I don't okay. think he'll be as, I don't think he'll be as expensive as his performance probably should make him. He's been an outfielder. He's not great in the outfield. He wants to go back to second base. He thinks the outfield is what's contributed to his injuries. Second but base, a, you say? Exactly. <laughs> he is a, he is a great hitter. He's a fantastic hitter, switch hitter. I think what the Red Sox need is to make sure that the guys... So Okay, so people think when I put Bobby Dahlbeck in a trade package, I'm giving up on him. I think Bobby Dahlbeck's going to be a fine player. If he turns into Mark Trumbo, like I say he basically projects as, that's not a bad player. Mark I know, Trumbo but had a thinking very good of Mark career. Trumbo is just strikeouts and the uh, occasional bomb. <laughs> which is Bobby Dahlbeck. You're um, right. You're absolutely um, right. So I want put to put Dahlbeck in a package to get Cattell Marte, Jaron Duran as well. The Diamondbacks need a center fielder. They need a corner infielder. They need a lot, let's face it. But you get uh, Cattell Marte and then also through that trade because you're giving up a lot to get him. I mean, there's more, more guys in the package. I just mentioned those two. You're also getting Merrill Kelly. Yeah. You're also getting Merrill Kelly, who's a guy who is okay. He eats innings, six innings a start last year. He, or about was like 5.9 per start. Uh, not great. Contact guy, home runs have been an issue, but is that really because it's Arizona or because he gives up a lot of home runs? I don't know, but I'm willing to take the risk to also bring in Cattell Marte. All right, I, I I like the fact that you included the trade. I forgot that I didn't I didn't necessarily specify, but I just said off season wish list. So you can get these guys however you want. You can bring Dice K out of retirement if you really want to bring him back. Yeah, but nobody uh, wants to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, that's why that's why it's nobody that's why it's outside the box. <laughs> Excuse me, who's next on your list, Sean? <laughs> yeah, Sean, number three. Me nice rapidly guy, changing crap who's on my list. Yeah, he's um, writing furiously. Uh, no, I've got I've got Steven Matz at number three on my list. Um, his peripherals always hover around. He's a reliably, you know, always around four. You know, he had a, had a 4.12 Sierra last year. Perfect back end of the rotation guy. He is just, like, like steady. Like, he's not going to be... He's going to be, like, a better version of Drew Pomeranz, I would say. Not like, like Wade, 2017. Wade Miley-ish? Yeah, I would say so, actually. Like, I mean, like, 
just someone that you can re- like you can throw out there and you know that there's like at least the potential for them to give you like a solid start because every time Garrett uh, Garrett Richards or Martin Perez stepped on the mound I'm like all right so we got to score like eight runs tonight just to get, just to stay in it <laughs> agreed um I think that would I think it would be re- he would be reasonably priced um if the Red Sox aren't going to spend money I've tried to keep myself like you know down to earth with these okay um just I want. I'm gonna give Bloom the benefit of the doubt, but I'm hedging right now with these. No, no. I, I, I get it, cause I also think that he's gonna kind of nickel and dime, uh, free agents this year, and I don't know whether it's going to be an a, a directive from management from John Henry saying, don't go over the CBT threshold. In which case, I think it's a mistake. But also, he's is kind of what he's used to. Like this mm-hmm. is why people are scared about what he's gonna do, like, cause they don't know his track record is that he's going to do that. The one thing that I would say about Matt's that does concern me is I kind of want another righty starter that you can kind of put with him. I know Hauk is coming along very nicely. I don't I, the, This Red Sox rotation in recent years has just been dominated by lefties. You had Price. You still have Sale. Erod is still hanging around, technically speaking. He hasn't signed with another team yet. So I would rather get another right-handed starter for my personal preference. But obviously Matt's was on that Mets team that made it to the World Series. He's been... Pretty pretty solid behind DeGrom and Syndergaard when he's out there, and then Harvey before he moved on. That's what I remember him as being primarily, was that fourth guy. But, I don't know, it could be interesting. So, now we get into the quote-unquote big guns. Top two. Sean, what's your number two? Well, my number two was Jordan's number five, um, Alex Cobb. Okay. I think that like I think that's just like a perfect fit for the Red Sox. If they improve the defense even slightly, I think he could have like a... Not necessarily a generational year, but he could have a really solid season or two. Um, he's just a like more ideal version of Matt. He excels at limiting fly balls, which is huge at Fenway. Sub three fifth this year. Like, there's nothing not to like about bringing in Alex Cobb. It just makes it makes too much sense. All right. Um, so that's the first one that you guys have shared, I think. So this could be interesting. Yeah. Um, Jordan, your number two. My, my number two is between two guys, and it's not really like a like a. Like they're st- superstar caliber players, it is a tie between Jerry's Familia and Chris Martin. Both of them had pretty good Who does seasons. Chris Martin play for now, or he, he plays for Atlanta. Last year? Atlanta. Okay, thank you. He, Sorry. The only issue with Martin, I mean, they had virtually the same ERA, three point nine five for Martin, three point nine four or for Familia. Their ex fips were both sub four. Familia's was actually better. Strikeouts favor Familia by a lot, but home run rate favors Martin by a lot. I am. Very on the fence with both of them. Martin's strikeouts just completely disappeared this year. Only 6.85 per nine innings. It's normally in the high eights to 10 range. Familia's was almost 11 this year. He does walk. He does come with a bit of a track record of walks. But I need guys that can pitch in high leverage innings. I am. I have basically decided that I am no longer in the in the ballpark of wanting a set closer. I want a bunch of guys who can pitch in, from the innings six through nine to this season. A lot of guys with closing experience. The Red Sox had 10 pitchers with a save last year. I would like to have probably somewhere between five and seven guys with multiple, maybe three or three plus this season. Both of those guys offer that. Familia more so because he used to be a legit closer. But those both both of those guys would be would be good ads, I think. I'm still not on the train of you. You need you. You don't need a closer. I still want one. I think Matt Barnes performed admirably up until he completely lost his. He got his lips ripped off multiple times, and it was never George, the same. George Springer ruined his old his old college buddies. If it's gonna be by hitting that home run, if it's gonna be Barnes, if it's gonna be Whitlock, I think I'd like one of them as closer, or you sign one because I think that it's still important to have certain guys. I think I would always like a guy that knows his role, where it's. You come in, you shut the door, because it does take a certain type of mentality to be the guy that's like, nobody's warming up behind me, this is my moment, and if I screw up, I am porked. Like, I should, I, re- uh, I should yeah. rephrase, I don't, when I say set closer, I don't mean like you have no clue who's closing. Like You have a primary closer, but you have a bunch of guys you're comfortable with going okay. to in the ninth inning. I don't mean like 2019 where, it's, is it Workman, Barnes, or Brazier tonight? Who the hell is closing? Well, Workman just pitched in the sixth inning, so leaves two. Wait a second. Barnes <laughs> is pitching in the seventh, and the heart of the order is due up in the ninth. Ryan Brazier's closing tonight? No, I want I want, I want. want there to be like three three to four guys you're comfortable with pitching in the ninth inning versus just, I mean, Barnes got to be at the level where it's one, and then you had nobody. I mean, Whitlock, but 
Those I was gonna say, you guys, you guys ain't rocking with Ryan Brazier as the set closer. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good point. I can't believe we overlooked that. It was so Austin obvious. Austin Davis truthers, where are you at? <laughs> I'm an Austin Davis truther, but Lord have mercy if that guy ever pitches the ninth inning <laughs> in, a, in a meaningful game. I agree. Oh, John Carlos Stanton says hello. <laughs> All right, Jordan, who's atop your uh, wish list? Trevor Story. That dude had a down year this year offensively in Colorado. I think, I don't know if it necessarily had to do with just him not wanting to be there anymore. If it was the juiced balls, I personally think he just didn't want to be in Colorado anymore. And who can blame him? That organization is a dumpster fire, but he's an elite defensive shortstop. Rocktober, baby. (laughs) We will be, they'll be lucky to see that before like 2035 at this point, but he, he's a great defensive shortstop. Spot track has his market value at twenty nine point eight million. I think that's a bold faced lie. They have him as uh, more. Uh, the, his market value is higher than Correa's. I think that's a lie. I've seen him his market be as low in terms of just reporting somewhere between eighteen and twenty two million. If he's in that market, that's a no brainer. You put him at shortstop by virtue of having a good defensive shortstop. Devers will improve defensively, and you get Bogarts to second base, where I think he is much better suited as an infielder. Personally, I think he may be destined for the outfield at some point, but at second base, it's worth at least experimenting with after we saw how well Marcus Semien improved defensively when he moved from shortstop to second base. I would love to see that work out. All right. Uh, Sean, who's at the top of your list? Well, I was not aware that reports were putting Trevor Story's value at 18 to $22 million. Yeah, I saw one. I saw one. I don't remember who it was, but it was verified. They were on MLB Network Radio, so it's not like it's some jabroni. Was yeah, like, no, it was it's like, like three years, fifty-four million or somewhere like that. Three to three, fifty-four to sixty. I'd do that. That's what e- that's what Erod was just extended. Yeah. Good God. No, All I right. would. If if that was the case, if that is the case, if that's Story's market, one hundred percent Story is my top guy. Um, but I will I will explain my other my other top pick, Mark Canna. I Love think he would Canna. play really well at Fenway. He's an elite defender. He gets on base like nobody's business. And even even in a down year, he had like a 360 OBP. The dude's like just reliably great every year, like a four to five win player every season. You'd basically you'd basically be getting like another version of a, another version of Kike. He's a little older. He's entering, I think, his age 33 season. Um, but even on like a three year deal, I think that would be more than ideal for this team. You can move Kike to second base. Your defensive alignment suddenly is a whole lot better. You, you, you manage to keep your outfield defense at like a top elite level. I think it works perfectly. I noticed that neither of you guys said Carlos Correa. Obviously, uh, he's pie in about... the sky. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I like did want to. I, said, like I, I did want to ask Sean dream. here though, if you can get one of these middle infielder infielders. Let's say that you have. Uh, not necessarily Correa money, but if you wanted to lowball him a little bit and extend the term, you could get him almost like a Bryce Harper type of thing, but you're not mm-hmm. paying him that really high money. You can choose to sign Seager, Story, Correa, Baez. Those are the four. Which one are you going for? And obviously, you're not signing them all to the same contract. I'd assume that some would be shorter than others because they're not as good. But which one would you want of the four? Correa, no question. Like. Okay. What, it, do you th- what do you think is a, a realistic ballpark for a contract that he would get, though? I mean, for him, he yeah. can be looking at ba- he can be he the the bare minimum should be what Lindor got, like that has to, that has to be the baseline because he's he's significantly better than Francisco Lindor. He's a better hitter. He's just as good, if not better, of a defender. Um, and he's what twenty seven. Yeah, like, he's twenty seven. Yeah, looking. no, oh, that's okay. like just that's a, that's that's obscene. He's entering his prime as one of the best players in baseball. Like, it has to be at least like thirty three, thirty four million a year for him. Maybe like, all- I don't. Go ahead. Like, yeah, it's just insane. He's also like really bought into the idea of being a villain, and I absolutely love that. Like, it. Mm-hmm. I, I, I. That's I what makes that me think me, that the Yankees would want him, and that's what scares me the most. He. I've seen people who follow me. All, some people f- also watch like WWE and they're like it's great TV to have somebody that like is embraces being a villain it is it gets you talking about the sport gets you talking about the team Carlos Correa people like to crap on him for the Astros thing like I mean I think at this point we're about four years removed from the the, the crux of the cheating scandal let's get over it at this point 
that's 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 my mindset on it. Like obviously, you know, people are, are free to hold their different opinions on it. Carlos Correa benefited very little from it. He was hurt for much of that three year window where they were supposedly cheating. And he's just basically been like, F you, I'm gonna just go out and dominate and that's what he did in twenty twenty one. He is awesome for the sport. He is probably like, listen, if Tatis is a full-time outfielder, Correa is definitely the best shortstop in the league. It's close, even if Tatis is still a shortstop, because Tatis just sucks defensively. He is so yeah. bad. Um, but, like I said, this dude's great for the sport. If if you can sign any of those five, Correa, Gap, probably Seager, and then the rest, probably then Story, Baez, yes. and then I don't... Simeon wants to play shortstop. I don't think he's a shortstop anymore. Not gonna get I'd shortstop, put him five. I don't think. I'd mm-hmm. put him at five for that reason. All right. Well, that concludes this episode of Mass Holes with Mike's. Another baseball episode, and I promise. I know we say this a lot. I do promise we are going to be doing more hot stove shows because I want to get over... Uh, I want to get through some of the moves that go into the off season. Maybe, maybe in a couple of weeks we do one where what, whatever free agents are left, because I don't think anyone's going to be signing like super early, especially not the, any of the big names, in my opinion... Uh, we can kind of go over landing spots where we think some of these big guys will end up. So, for Sean and Jordan, thank you for joining me on this episode. You can find us at Mass with Mikes on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Mass Holes with Mikes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, and I believe iHeartRadio too. So, for Jordan and Sean, I'm Jeremy saying have a good rest of your day, everybody.